Welcome to my video on how to set up the high level membership slash client portal. And I think that slash is kind of important because it kind of emphasizes something that you'll notice with the high level client portal. It's multifunctional. It serves many different purposes. It's where you can have your clients sign in to see their invoices. It can be where your affiliates sign in to see their affiliate commissions and their affiliate stuff. It could be where your course students log in to see their courses, where your community members log in to see their communities. It can be a lot of things and everything in high level that falls into one of those categories, courses, communities, affiliates, payments, contracts, etc. They all go through the client portal. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the portal at a baseline and subsequent videos, I'm going to go over deep dives into communities and courses and show you how all of those kind of come full circle for uh, the client portal. But I just want you to be aware that this is kind of a really a multifaceted feature. And in some ways a little bit, you know, the saying like everything was it everything but the kitchen sink. I think that's what it is. They kind of just dumped everything into this. And it was kind of confusing to me when I very first started using high level. I'm like, wait a minute, where's the login for courses? Where's the login for communities? Are they one in the same? Yeah, they're all the same. It's all in the client portal under membership. There's some terminology that I think over the years they're going to want to figure out and fix. Um, but we're going to dive in. We're going to take a look at how to get everything set up. Now, I just finished recording the other two videos that are in a part of this little mini series of about setting up a client portal. And this is kind of what we ended with at the very end here. This is what it looks like fully set up. So I'm going to dive into the video next here where I show you basically how to get to the point where you're ready for communities and for courses. Um, and it looks very basic and bland. I mean, it still doesn't, it's not like a ton to look at here. Um, but essentially this is what it would ultimately become a place where your members slash students slash clients could see, oh, okay, here's what I've recently visited. Here's my courses that are in progress. Oh, if I want to join a group, join a course, you know, that's where, you know, click on this. That's where I would make it happen. Um, all of this is kind of what you're building to as part of this three part series. And this one is how to get it set up. So this is future Doug. I'll go ahead and kick it back to past Doug and dive in and show you how to get it all set up. To get started, we're going to go to the membership section on the left hand side. Now, by default, we're landed on the dashboard section, which has some useful information, for example, what your client portal is and some actions that you can take, which are really helpful when managing a community or a membership using the portal section. So all I'm going to say about this is just remember that these actions are here because they are useful. But to really get started, we're going to go to client portal up here at the top and we're going to visit settings. We're going to get started by setting up our domain so that we can have our client portal resolve to something other than this very generic high level client club.net URL with a bunch of gibberish, right? Because I can copy this URL, I can open a new tab and you can see here it's just super, super generic. So I'll get started by adding a domain. I'll do maybe like a subdomain of my test site. So I've gone ahead and entered in members.marketingfunnels.live, which is a site that I own, and I'll click add domain. Now you're gonna get this little screen that comes up that says you can add these records manually, or record in this case, to your domain, or you can just go ahead and click continue. And what that's going to do is it's going to detect where your DNS is managed. In my case, it's on Cloudflare. So this becomes super easy. It automatically knows that I'm at Cloudflare and I can click this authorize domain button. Now, since I'm already logged in, it's going to go ahead and give me the record that I can use and I can just click authorize. I get instantly brought back here and it says authorizing. This takes roughly 30 seconds and you're good to go. If you don't do it this way, you can click that record manually like I showed you and add it to your DNS. Okay, now that our custom domain is all set up, I can click the three dots and now I can preview it. And there it is. It's now on my new special subdomain but it still looks pretty basic. Let's clean this up. Let's return to settings. And now that our domain is set up, let's go ahead and configure our branding. We can enter our portal name. We'll call this one Convology Academy and a description. Now we can choose our brand colors. If we want, we can choose a portal image, a fave icon, a logo, and so on. I'll go ahead and choose a logo really quickly. So just a heads up, it wants it to be a one-to-one -one image, basically a square. Uh, so you need to upload your image or your logo as a square. I found an old image that I have that I've added there. You can enter in a support email, copyright info if you wish. I'll let you go ahead and add any other images that you want. And then down here under advanced, you can add JavaScript, which is basically like script codes that you've been given. You can add code for custom CSS if you want to get fancy. And then you can add tracking codes for analytics, 
any other tools you might add in, like ConvertBox or stuff like that. But once you're ready to go, just click Save Settings. All right, with our branding all updated, let's return and actually let's go ahead and give a preview or get a preview of this. All right, so here's what my members area looks like. I didn't upload an image, so there's nothing here in the background. I would probably recommend doing that. Mine kind of goes from my brand blue to my uh, secondary brand, like dark, really slate blue color. Um, so it's a gradient, which I don't think looks terrible. Um, the icon I think absolutely does look bad though. I would upload something a little bit different in my case without a white background, but this just gives you an idea for what gets shown when you update your colors. And you can see it here in the very bottom left, it added my support email. Now, if for some reason you aren't seeing your updated brand settings, I do recommend that you clear your cache or do like a, a control or command or like a command shift R, control shift R, um, whatever it is on a Mac. And that'll kind of clear things out and mine appeared after just like one or two refreshes. All right, let's quickly go into the app permission section. In here, you're gonna basically choose what applications you want to be visible inside of your client portal or this membership area. They call it the client portal, so I guess I'll keep calling that as well. But let's say that we don't want to show contracts inside of our portal and we don't want to show affiliates, but we want this to be a place where people can see their courses, their communities, and all of their billing information. We'll go ahead and leave those selected. And then down here, we get to choose a default landing page. We can choose when someone goes or logs into our portal to have them land on the home screen, which I think is what I would recommend in most cases, or we can show them the communities or the courses I guess this would really depend on the type of membership that you're creating. If you are creating a community first setup, which is what I do, but I do it on Circle, then you would go ahead and choose communities as your homepage. If you were a course first or very course driven membership, and that's what you were setting up, then I would obviously choose courses. But I think there's nothing really wrong with choosing home. It does create a nice experience. And we'll take a look at what all of these different pages look like. Once you have everything set up, just go ahead and click save and let's return back. And we're gonna visit our final section under settings called email settings. The email settings section here under client portal allows you to come in and change the templates that you're using for each of these default emails. So for example, when somebody is tagged in a post inside of your uh, community, they're going to receive a notification that says, hey, you were tagged. Now you can change that email notification, but if you do so, you're just creating a lot more work for yourself by having to uh, create an email that accomplishes everything the default one does already. And the default ones don't look terrible by any means. You just can't preview them, which I wish you could do. You have to actually change the template to something else, but then you're losing out on a lot of like the really nice buttons that have been made to bring somebody dynamically back into the post that they were tagged in. And you're really just losing out on, on those features. So what I would actually say you would do in here in email settings is leave everything alone unless you're just really wanting to be an advanced user and just choose which of these emails you don't want included. So if you don't want to send an email when let's just say like a new course was added, if you don't want there to be an email for that, just go ahead and turn off that email notification if you'd rather. The same thing goes for certificates and courses. I think the courses one actually has uh, potentially the best opportunity for customization, specifically for uh, the signup section. But this is just a very generic welcome email that goes out to somebody when they've uh, signed up for the course. So you may actually end up wanting to turn this off and handle all of this from within the workflow builder, uh, which I go into more detail in other videos. So although this can be a ton of work if you do make any edits, it can also be no work at all if you're doing what I'm doing, which is just leaving it completely alone. All right, let's go ahead and test out accessing our community and visiting the general portal page. And let's go ahead and do that by adding somebody into our community. So by default, if you want to invite somebody, and this is actually what I do for myself when I add myself into my own portal, you can send them a login email. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to add them to your client portal. It's going to send them a basic email that says, you know, click here to access the community, you've been invited. And then it's gonna take them here to this set a new password screen. So let's go ahead and do this for ourselves to get ourselves added into the community. Awesome, so I have set a password and I've been able to log in now to the quote unquote Combology Academy. And by default, this is what we're seeing on a very basic client portal screen. Now, technically we have completed the initial setup of our client portal, but there are a few other things that I wanna show you for the client portal before we close out this video and you can go watch parts two and three to learn about courses and communities. But here's what I wanna show you before we close out. Basically inside of your portal, the main way to get around after we leave this home screen, once we've populated with some stuff, which we'll cover in the next uh, two episodes of this mini series. But first, let's just take a look at this very top bar because this top bar is super important. We have in the upper left-hand corner, the little home icon, which will take us basically back to this screen. Then we have over here in the top right, this little grid of dots that when I click on it, it's going to bring down communities and courses. 
So for example, if I select communities, it's going to say to me, well, no communities were found, which is correct. There are no communities. We haven't made them yet. And the same thing for courses. When I click on courses, you can see it automatically adds this. You are previewing it in admin mode and you can see I have cor all courses and my courses. And then lastly, we have, well, a new little sub window that opened up here. We have a search function that we can search through lessons and courses, which I find quite useful actually. Um, we'll go over that later. Um, we have the home button, which has revisited us here in the top right. I'll pop back here and go to courses to show you that again. And then we have our notifications where we can see notifications from the community, uh, things like that, pretty standard. And then we have this little profile section. So I can open this up and click manage my account. And it's gonna open up a, a pretty standard, but actually pretty decent little profile for your members to edit their information. Pretty standard profile stuff here. They can add a picture, um, stuff about their bio, things like that. Under the account section, they can change their password. Uh, social media, if they wish, they can add it and choose to make it publicly visible for things like their email. Uh, they have certificates that they've earned, which I think is pretty cool. If you need to like let your members download their own certificates, I find this section uh, functionally one of the best parts of this. There's a billing and subscription section. When your users try to access this, it's actually going to send them a code to authenticate their account. They're gonna get an email, they just enter it in, and it's kind of like a double authentication to make it extra safe. And the last is this community chat section. Give you different options for blocking users and um, basically controlling notifications and who can contact you inside of different groups. But as you see now, we don't have any of these groups enabled. So the portal, not much to look at just yet, but the technical setup is completed and you're going to see more of what we can do with this portal, what we can transform and turn it into once we've explored communities as well as courses. So be on the lookout for parts two and three of this little series.